Have you ever wondered about the origin of the names of some of the foods you eat? It happens to me all the time. What amuses me in particular is the fact that even the most far-fetched and absurd explanations most of the time could prove true. Among the products that most arouse curiosity is certainly cacio cavallo. What could a stretched curd cow's milk cheese typical of southern Italy have in common with one of the most elegant animals around? Sorry to disappoint, but the answer might be nothing at all. Cacio cavallo is a medium long aged cheese made with milk, rennet, and salt. The curd is reduced into rather small pieces, roughly the size of hazelnuts, which are then compacted into a mass that is left to ferment for several days before being cut into slices, melted in hot water, and processed until they take on the typical shape with two overlapping oval heads one larger and one smaller. A thread is classically rolled around the ladder which is used to hang the cheese and let it mature. In Cimina, a small Calabrian town of 700 inhabitants within the Aspromonte National Park, one of the largest and most beautiful in Italy, near Reggio Calabria, the Cacio Cavallo takes on a new, smaller shape with two heads placed at the ends of the cheese. Consumed mostly fresh or cooked on the grill, this cheese, especially when taking on larger dimensions, can also be aged for several months. But let's get back to the name. According to some theories, the term cacio cavallo refers to the fact that the fresh cheese is hung to mature in pairs astride a beam. Others argue, however, that while this might perfectly describe the way of storing and transporting the cheese, its name is in fact a reference to the period of transhumance, when the shepherds moved from the plains to the mountains and carried these cheeses hanging from the back of a horse. Still others believe that the equine link can be found in a stamp that depicts the animal and that was imprinted on the cheese during the period in which southern Italy belonged to the kingdom of Naples. All that said, the most accredited and probably the truest explanation is, however, to be found in the Balkans, where a stretched curd cheese is produced, which seems to be the direct ancestor of Cacio Cavallo, and whose name is Cascaval. This word seems to have less to do with horses than with kosher law, which determines which products can be consumed by Jews and which cannot. And, in fact, in Bulgaria, Albania, and other places where it is produced and eaten, Kashkaval is also known as the cheese of the Jews. And speaking of names, one of its most classic uses is the eggplant parmesan, one of the symbolic dishes of the South, which, unlike what its name would suggest, does not have many ties with Parma except for the origin of one of its ingredients, Parmigiano Reggiano. But let's go back to the etymology of eggplant parmesan and limit ourselves to the two most accredited hypotheses. The Sicilian, that the name derives from the Latin parma, indicating wooden slats that are superimposed on each other, just like shutters to compose the layers of this dish. The Arabic one, on the other hand, more likely, would link the parmigiana to a Middle Eastern preparation called al-badijan, the ancestor of moussaka, and therefore a distant relative of our recipe as well. Wait now, how is parmigiana made? First of all, a rich tomato sauce is prepared with extra virgin olive oil, garlic, and basil. Then, the aubergines are cut into thin slices, salted, and left to drain for an hour before drying them. After which, dust them in flour and fry them in plenty of seed or olive oil. The cacio cavallo is then sliced and the parmesan cheese is grated. We then move on to the composition of the parmigiana. In a square pan, we start by putting a few tablespoons of tomato sauce, then a few slices of aubergine, the cacio cavallo, a sprinkling of parmesan cheese, and a few basil leaves. We proceed in this way, in layers, until we reach the top of the container. It is then cooked in a static oven at 180 degrees Celsius for about an hour and left to rest for at least a couple of hours. In this way, the parmigiana cools and becomes more compact.